You're an installer. You just consulted a business with a big dilemma. They just bought a warehouse with no networking infrastructure. There's no cables, no networking equipment, no connection to an ISP. They'd love to build a new network from the ground up, but lack the proper funds to do so. SOL, not with Grandstream, you're not. Hello again, Nathan here. Welcome to another Grandstream Tutorials. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about mesh networks. What is a mesh network? Put simply, it's a network that is fully operated over Wi-Fi. It allows connections of endpoints through a group of connected wireless access points. This is a cost-effective and reliable solution for any business that can't afford to build a new network infrastructure from the ground up. There is no need for pulling hundreds of networking cables. Deployments take hours instead of days, all at a reduced cost from a traditional wired network. We only have a gun to scratch the surface of mesh network. Stay tuned and we'll take a deeper look into the advantages and implementations of Grandstream's mesh networking solution. Before we can begin, let's talk about the terminology and different methods used to set up a mesh network. Starting with terminology, a CAP is short for Central Access Point. This is an AP that is directly connected to your wired network and you should think of it as the DMARC for the rest of your mesh network. All wireless traffic will flow through the CAP at one point or another. Next we have REs. This is short for range extenders. These REs are access points that are either directly connected to a CAP or to another range extender. It's important to note that the REs will not be connected to your wired network, but only be powered over PoE injectors. With that out of the way, we can talk about the different types of mesh networks. First, we have chain, star, and hierarchical. Chain mode uh, allows a cap to connect to a single line of REs, one right after another. The advantage of this is being able to cover long distances. Next, we have star mode. This is when all REs are connected directly to the cap and branch out from the cap like a star. This is perfect for hotspot coverage and gives a wider range of wireless coverage. This is perfect for customers concerned with dead zones. Next, we have hierarchical mode. This is a mix between chain and star mode. This shares a hierarchy of REs and layers. The first layer will be connected directly to the cap. This layer will often have multiple branches of REs branching from that first layer. This gets you an overall better coverage and throughput for anyone connected to your wireless mesh. Let's go ahead and do a site survey and find out what will work best for our needs. The relative height of our AP should not exceed four meters. This will help interference from neighboring APs not associated with our mesh network. Your central access point should be relatively close to your wired network. It should also be unobstructed so it can reach the other REs. Each access point should be within its max effective range. Our 7600 will have a range of 165 meters. Our 7610 will have a max effective range of 175 meters. And for our 7600 LR long range, this will be a toting 300 meters. Also, it is important to note that you should never exceed more than three hops from your central access point. For every consecutive hop you have, you'll have a decrease in overall throughput. For example, in my chain mesh setup, I'm currently standing at the third hop away from my central access point. This means I'm going to experience the most decrease in my overall throughput. The closer I move towards my cap, the more my overall throughput increases. Alright, now that we have a lot of the basic information out of the way, we can now get to the fun part, which is configuring the mesh network. Um, but before we get started, we need to make sure we have a couple things out of the way. First, make sure all your wireless access points are updated to 5.13 or higher. Um, next, we want to start by making sure that all the wireless access points are connected to the wired network. Uh, this makes it extremely easy to pick up the APs and be able to see their broadcast. That way we're able to discover them. Um, so I was a little lazy today. I did not look up the IP. I used the GWN underscore MAC address dot local in order to connect to my master AP of my choice, which makes things a lot easier. 
with all that out of the way, we can go ahead and start by discovering the other uh, REs in this case, or range extenders. And here they are. I'm going to go ahead and link this unit and this unit. Now I'm only going to use two in our case. Now sometimes this uh, can take a little bit. Currently being provisioned, but I can note that my REs are blinking with a blue light and they should turn solid once they're back online. Alright, now that my um, other APs are online and they are being controlled by my master AP, I can go ahead and start uh, the configuration portion. Uh, now I can actually go in and select all and add them to uh, my network group, group zero. So this is like our default VLAN group or the untagged uh, group. I'm going to make sure that all the access points are configured with that. I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now, if we want to configure the SSID for this, we're actually going to go to the network group. We're going to click edit. Go to the Wi-Fi section, which is already enabled. And this is enabled by default, but I don't want to keep this here. I want to make sure I change the default network group because uh, we have this already pre-programmed for you guys to access. As you can see, it comes with a randomly generated um, uh, pre-shared key. Let's go ahead and change this to something more familiar. Let's do admin 101. And that's what we'll be using to connect to the wireless um, connection. Let's name this uh, SSID. Uh, let's call it Nate. 101, why not? Now we have a lot of our wireless options here. Uh, but currently I'm going to keep a lot of the stuff default. You know what, if we are going to run any type of uh, VoIP equipment off this wireless network, I will enable this and I could set my upstream and downstream rate. Um, you know, for last, let's just go ahead and make it 250 on, on both up and down. Save this. Apply changes. Now at this point, I should be able to see my um, SSID being broadcast and I should be able to connect to that. But before we even go that far, we're going to continue on configuring the uh, REs and make sure that we have different channel distributions among them, especially if we're going to have two REs uh, right next to each other. We want to make sure that they're on different channels. Um, that way we don't get a constant uh, up and then coming down off that same SSID. All right, now that I got the default um, network group and SSID changed in my wireless options, which I highly recommend that you do before any uh, installation, I'm actually going to go to my access points page. I'm going to fine tune some of my REs now. Now by fine tuning my REs, I'm really going to be changing the channel distribution. Uh, of some of the APs, I don't want to have any uh, channels that are the same. So if I have two APs next to each other, I don't want them on the same channel. I want them on different channels. Um, reason being is if you kept everyone on the same channel, your your clients are going to be constantly complaining about you know being connected to the Wi-Fi, then all of a sudden getting dropped off, reconnecting, getting dropped off. You don't want that, so. Uh, to make things easier, uh, we have this video here to show you what to watch out for. Now in the configuration, I've already done this. I set it with a fixed IP. I didn't want to drag you through all that uh, initial information. I set my preferred DNS, uh, dual band frequency. Um, I changed my channel width on my 2.4 gigahertz between uh, 20 megahertz through 40, which gives us a little bit wider of a channel, a little bit more throughput. Um, but look, as you can see, I actually manually selected what channel I want to be on for this access point. Uh, by default, it's set to auto. I highly recommend that you stay away from that and you select whichever one that you need. Um, I just put this on the, on the, on the lowest range possible. Uh, but for my next uh, RE, I'm also going to do the same thing here, but the only difference really... Um, uh, besides having a fixed IP, you could do that. That is optional for your REs, uh, which I'm not going to do. Um, 
make sure you go in here and you set what your channel range is. I'm going to select something different from my master. I'm also going to do that for my 5G as well. I'm going to save that. I'm also going to do this for my other one as well. Alright, now that I have the channels changed over, I can apply changes. I'm going to go ahead and wait for that one to come back online. Alright, we're looking good here. Everything's set in stone. I changed my my channel distribution so I'm not going to have any conflicting APs in the same range um, but beyond that that's pretty much as far as we need to get as far as the uh, configuration of the access points uh, now we can actually get to the mesh now uh, I'm uh, now that I'm logged in as the uh, on the master access point I'm actually going to go down I'm going to hit this mesh tab I'm going to make sure that we have this enabled and it's recommended that you use the 5G radio interface for the mesh. Obviously, this can give you uh, a much greater throughput. And it's recommended by us that you use the 5G for the mesh connection. I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. And it's that easy. Um, let's go back up to our access points. All that's left to do is um, unplug my REs from my wired network and uh, connect them to a PoE injector. Um, and now that's key here. Uh, we uh, currently don't want you to have them plugged into a regular wired switch because uh, the moment those REs pick picks up that there is uh, traffic coming off that ethernet port, it won't go into mesh. So it's imperative that uh, we use the um, uh, PoE injector only and nothing connected to it. There's no, no traffic going in and out of those ports at all. So once we can do that, um, we'll actually have this little mesh tab come up, which we currently don't have. But uh, give me a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and actually install these now. And we'll come back to this and we'll sync up the mesh. All right. So I'm here. I'm setting up my first cap. I got my PoE cable right here, which is in gray. That's going to be connected directly to our wired network. And this will be our DMARC zone for the rest of the mesh network. On here, you could emit this cable. This is just going to another network, but I have to make sure that this gets plugged back in. So I'll plug the net in first. Then after, I'll make sure I plug in the PoE. From there, it's as easy as lining up. Boom. There we go. Ready to install this RE or a range extender here. A good note, this is not connected to any switch that's connected to the network. This is only providing PoE because that's all we need for our mesh network. Make sure that goes in the PoE port once again. In the process of installing this RE, you're probably not going to get to see me do that. I guarantee you can use your imagination of how we got it up there. And that covers our third RE for the indoors. It should cover everyone within this warehouse. Uh, next, we're going to do the uh, outside RE facing outward to the shipping area. Once we have that done, we'll be complete. So we just got done setting up our last RE, and this is for the shipping yard, so obviously it's going to be foot facing outward towards the shipping yard, and we can see it up here. Now that we have the last RE set up, let's go ahead and check our signal coverage with the Wi-Fi analyzer, and we'll be good from there. Now that those APs are back up and online, uh, we can see that they are online, and they are wirelessly online. Um, we can click here on that little mesh icon and there we have it. We have uh, one of our APs directly connected to our master. Now I could go and rename these guys which makes it really easy. 
Um, but, you know, your naming scheme could come however you feel. Like maybe this uh, AP that ends with 44A4 is going to be for the lunchroom or something. We can go ahead and name that lunchroom. That's all up to you guys. And you do that in the configuration portion of that AP when you edit it. Just like how I named my master AP. Now we could do this here. But let me, let me show you something. We have two ways we could uh, configure this. We can go into the mesh directly, click on the AP itself, and also have the same configurations options we do on the uh, master APs configuration page. So two ways to do it, but you can do it either or, whatever your preference is. And as you can see, our, um, our channel distribution stayed. That's good. We want to make sure that we have different channels. All right. Now that we have our wireless access points configured in their mesh uh, scheme, we also need to make sure that uh, everything's up and running and okay. And we can do this uh, by using a Kua heat mapper. Now this is a free tool that um, I have been using to test my mesh network and any wireless setup that I do. Um, it's pretty straightforward and easy. If you can get a JPEG image of your blueprint, uh, you can actually go ahead and upload it to this little heat map and it'll actually do a two-dimensional scan as you do a walkthrough of your client site and it'll produce a really really cool image of like if it's green you have a really solid connection if you start boarding on yellow orange to red which is the extreme you start getting a poor Wi-Fi connection so it's something that's really fun to play with even if you're not someone who installs every day um, uh, you start by importing your JPEG image, which I believe I have right here. Hopefully that's the right one. Here we go, it's the right one. Now we have two blueprints of the buildings here. The one to the upper right hand corner is actually the building that we did the installation on. The bigger building is um, our main office, so we'll call this our little island um, uh, office here. Um, but it's pretty simple. All you do is you start by uh, clicking where your start point is. Then as you're walking through to a destination, you're going to actually follow and track this as you walk through. And then you'll go ahead and click right where you travel. Now, uh, you should be able to see in a pretty rough estimation of where these wireless access points are installed. Uh, but as I'm going to walk through here and do this, obviously I cannot walk through and have my recording equipment with me. It's a little troublesome. So I'm going to do a walkthrough of this. But as, you know, as I'm walking through, I'm going to go ahead and click where I'm walking um, within this little blueprint. And I should have a nice... A healthy um, Wi-Fi network when I'm done so uh, I'll be right back and you should see me soon all right so I just did a roundabout the whole office and as you can see a Kua mapped uh, each Wi-Fi access points even the ones we didn't install uh, this was done at our uh, Grandstream office, so there's a lot of other access points uh, in this building that's not part of our mesh network. But um, as you can see, I mean, we still have exceptional coverage. Right here, you can see our cap that was installed on the lower section of this heat map. Then up to the right, you could also see one of our REs covering the upper right corner of the office. And just to the left, there's our secondary RE covering the left side of the office. So in total, we have three access points um, for the mesh setup. Um, with that being said, uh, it's highly recommended that for every install that you do, you use some type of heat map to help you discover where your, uh, your dead zones are. Because the last thing that you want to do is put in all this work installing your mesh network, which to be quite honest isn't a lot, but you know, you don't want to have to go back on location because there's a dead zone where you, didn't, where you least expected it. So definitely run the uh, uh, Kui heat map or one of your choice. Uh, there's also some other uh, applications out there that will run on your phone, like acrylic, 
Now, from what I'm familiar with, acrylic does not do the heat map, but it will show you your signal strength between uh, each Wi-Fi, and it'll show you all the different SSIDs in and around you. It'll even show you what their um, what their gigahertz range is. So that's something that you could kind of tune in uh, each network on, um, you know, avoiding any conflicting um, Wi-Fi channels. At the end of the day, the more tools you have to uh, manage and uh, troubleshoot your Wi-Fi networks, the better you are uh, going to be as an installer. With that being said, that concludes the end of the mesh networking video. And as always, have a good day. We hope that you found that video tutorial helpful. And if you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for the latest in video tutorials. I'm Nathan Sharp. You have a good one.